All right, it's Greg here. I cut myself. I was doing some boxing. I was making sure to keep my hands up, and I put my hand back, and I just cut my chin. Um, it's fun, man. I love I love doing all the, the, the boxing, MA, savat. Um, but this video is about something I've been getting asked a lot, and a lot of people ask me, you know, why the hell am I always stopping the rep right here instead of locking it out on incline presses, on overhead presses. A lot of people want, want to know why I'm doing that. And some people are like, oh, you know, you're not doing the exercise properly, or you know what, let's say I did 260 incline for five. Oh, it doesn't count. I'm not that strong because I didn't lock out. Well, actually the lockout's the easy part of the lift. The lockout is the easy part. It's very easy to do this last range of motion. So whenever you're doing these reps, I mean, the lockout's a given. It's like easy. Um, so the reason why I avoid locking out is because I want to keep constant tension on the muscle. So when I'm doing incline press, I'm doing it to build my chest, especially the upper chest. So by just stopping here, I'm keeping that tension on the muscle. I can keep, I can maintain a constant like kind of motion and pump. So I actually hit trigger and build my chest much more effectively that way. Contrarily, if I was to bring it all the way up and lock out, what happens? You have a moment there where a lot of the work um, that was on the chest actually gets displaced and it's actually put on the joints. So it actually makes the exercise a little bit easier and it lessens and reduces the muscle building stimulus from my perspective and experience. Now that's not to say it's wrong to lock out. That's fine. If you like to lock out, it's fine. Results will probably be similar. I just get a little bit better results with the lockout. Now the other thing is that I'm always focused on progressive overload. I'm always focused on, you know, hitting that, that PR when I can. And so I find that, you know, if I'm doing like eight reps, if I'm doing eight reps and I'm locking out each rep, it just unnecessarily increases the, the time of the lift. So that's just, there's more time that the, the, the joints and the structural muscles are having to work. And so actually, if I go a little bit of faster pace and avoid the lockout, I can actually get more, I can get more work on the muscle and better achieve a personal record. So in essence, by avoiding the lockout, I actually give my muscles a much, much better workout. That said, this isn't always the case. For example, if you're doing one rep or you're doing doubles or triples, so two or three reps, you kind of want to lock out because if you're doing a super heavy weight, you only do about two or three times, if it doesn't make sense to stop here. You know, you want to finish the lift because it's so heavy, you want to get that little break and then decide, okay, can I go for another rep here? Um, you'll actually be stronger if you're doing low reps by getting that lock at that brief rest period of time, but over the course of, you know, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 reps, the lockout kind of just um, puts your structural muscles and the, the things that kind of support just holding the weight there under stress, which can actually increase fatigue and th th therefore reduce your ability to actually take your prime movers and put them into exhaustion. That's my experience. Um, so in essence, the reason I don't lock out is because it's actually probably more effective to build muscle. In fact, a lot of people agree with this. A lot of people, they say that if you know, you're focusing on building muscle and you're doing, you know, five to 12 plus reps, then keep a constant movement, constant motion. And then if you're doing heavy, heavy lifting for one to three reps, maybe four reps, then lock it out. Um, that said, maybe certain exercises, I would have more of a lockout. Like if I was doing heavy dips, I probably, even if it was like eight reps, I probably would want to come up a bit higher, not like fucking locking it out because that can put the, the joint under a lot of stress. You know, when you're doing boxing, kickboxing, they always tell you, you know, when you're shadow boxing, or you're punching, you don't want to fucking snap your elbow. It can really hurt yourself over time of doing a lot of training. You want to kind of just avoid that full snap, like that full elbow kind of hyperextension. So, I mean, these are my thoughts on it. Um, I would recommend you guys experience and determine what works better for you. You know, for me, I definitely like to keep that constant motion and come right back into the rep. I definitely get a better workout on those prime movements um, and so on and so forth. And you know, one could argue that, oh, because I'm not locking out every rep, my tricep doesn't get as good of a workout. But at the same time, it's like the lockout is so easy. You know, no one fails because they can't lock out. It's so rare. If you take too heavy of a weight and you're gonna fail on it, usually you fail right here, right below below 90, you know. It's very rare, or, or at 90, it's very rare that you get above 90 and then that's where you have the weak strength. Um, that's very rare. So I mean, if you really wanna work your triceps, then what would be better would, I mean, your triceps are still getting a ton of work, even if you just go to here. Like, fact of the matter, you're getting tons of work. Um, 
because again, this part is easy. If you really want to work your triceps, do some direct tricep work. And if you really, really want to work them as well, do some heavy, heavy, um, you know, do some, some half presses, you know, or like some, some chains or some bands to overload the top portion of the lift so you can actually really get, get so actually, actually get your triceps to work. Um, as well, you know, maybe on the last rep of your set, if you're doing the pump in motion, then really lock it out which is obviously you have to do because you have to rack it. Um, but like, you know, you know, on over at press, I'll always make sure that my last one, I really hold it there or lock it out, get that full lockout. Um, but I mean, and then also, you know, I'm starting to do some, um, some reverse grip bench, which I really like. It's supposed to actually activate the upper chest more so. That's what the, the research shows. I, probably, I still find incline press to be more effective for my upper chest in the long run, but you know, the, 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 uh, more than anything, it's just a nice fun lift that I haven't done in a while, which is fun and it's, and I'm actually having fun with it. So, and, and it, it doesn't burn me out cause I'm so new to it. So I'm doing like the reverse grip and actually the reverse grip, you know, you actually kind of want to finish the movement here. It just, it would be awkward to kind of just pump it like that. So the reverse grip is actually a great way to challenge your triceps and challenge that lockout strength. For whatever reason, it actually is really conducive to putting it through that last couple inches. Um, so anyways, these are my thoughts on the matter. Um, this style of training really applies to, you know, your presses. Um, not so much, you know, not so much like chin-ups. Chin-ups, you definitely want to get full range and get all the way up there. You know, I see a lot of people that kind of do this. I mean, you want to get the full, full range. Um, curls, some people will actually bring it all the way up here. There's no gravity, you know, and it's like, what are you doing here? It's like, stop until just before there's no more tension. Um, cause when it's here, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of supported. So, I mean, th this is pretty much why I, I, uh, I don't lock out on my incline, my overhead. And, uh, yeah, I challenge you to try both techniques, see what's more effective. Um, at the very least, if you do love locking out, then go for it. Do that. I'm not going to tell you it's wrong. I'm just going to tell you that I get a bit of a better stimulus, not locking out, but I would say on your last set. So let's say, so, I mean, the most effective, this is just fact of the matter, the most effective training style for strength and muscle is reverse pyramid. Doing your heavy set first after a brief warm-up, so you're fresh, you can hit a mega PR, and then for your next couple sets, taking full rest periods and going a little bit lighter and getting a, couple, a bit more reps. So, if you do like locking out, then lock out all your reps on your first heavy set, and then on the lighter sets where you're dropping the weight 10%, um, then go through a pumping motion. So, how this would look is, let's say you do like, you know, five reps for your heavy set and you lock out every rep. That's cool, fine, do that. Rest, rest you on know, three minutes, drop the weight 10%, so if you're doing 200, go down to 180, then maybe you're gonna go for about six to seven reps. Then maybe on those ones, you, you go for more of a pump in motion, you know, and you avoid that lockout. And then the last one, you go, you drop 10% again, maybe you're down to 160, and you're going for eight to 10 reps. Those ones, you definitely really wanna pump out because again, that lockout's just gonna, it's gonna slow you down, it's gonna, um, tire your structural muscles so you actually can't get as many reps over a higher rep set and you're actually going to do a much better job building your muscles with the pumping motion on those higher reps so I feel like I kind of just kind of hit on every point like five times to really like sink it through so you know if you enjoyed this video hit the like button um this isn't me saying voice of God this is the only way to do it this is just me sharing my experiences what has worked best for me talking to a lot of experts they seem to agree one to three reps Get the, get the lockout, but again, with the lockout, you don't want to snap your elbow, you just want to kind of finish it. Um, and then, you know, when you're going for like the five plus reps, then put it through a nice smooth pump in motion. Um, yeah, so share your comments, what works best for you, and if you have a chance to try this, then again, come back here, comment below, and, and, and let me know. All right, guys, if you enjoyed this video, like I said, like button, subscribe, and if you're ready to join one of my programs to really achieve that sleek Hollywood physique, and find out exactly what you need to do, whether you're, whether you're, you know, you got a lot of fat to lose, whether you're already very lean, but you need to put on those, that muscle, get a bit more size, so you have, you know, that, that look, then use my free physique builder tool at kinobody.com slash tool, and I'll talk to you later. Peace. All right, so I said I was doing some kickboxing, so I've been working on it um, for a few weeks now. I used to train five years in Jeet Kune Do, so I'm gonna do a little, a few techniques for you for fun to make this video a bit more engaging so